series on So What's Your Story and how to write your story. And before we get started, I would like to introduce my guest, Dr. Cecilia Cecil, Cecile, yes. did I say that right? Yes, you Cecile did. Cecile Bolton and Calvin Mann just arrived in the house. So I would like to introduce you before we get started. Um, Cecile, will you please tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll have Mr. Mann introduce himself. Yes, indeed. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Cecile Bolton, also known as Dr. Sunshine. You can see it here. You can see it there. All right. I am an educator of special needs. I've been teaching now for 18 years. I currently teach preschool special needs. I am also the grade chair for pre-K at my school. I am a member of the pre-K through third grade council where we focus on different initiatives that are necessary for parents and children in those grade levels. I am a reading endorsed educator. And I've also, oh, I'm also Miss Full Figure Georgia Swimwear 2020. Ah, you got a fat girl. <laughs> <laughs> I am a part of the Royal Court for Miss Full Figure Georgia, and I am Dr. Sunshine Presents. I present books before bedtime for children in the evenings, as well as a Black children's author showcase that I started in June that happens on Saturdays. So that is me in a nutshell. I'm a Georgia peach as well. Uh, well, all right. Ain't nothing wrong with Georgia peaches because I'm a Georgia peach too. Yes, Mr. Calvin <laughs> Mann, would you, <laughs> would you introduce yourself to the to to our audience, please, sir? You're muted. <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> let, me, let me start. Let me start by saying I most definitely I got a hard stop at four, but I am in here, and uh, I'm I'm trying to find your page right to share it so people can see you know, the, the pay pro V, you know what I mean? Making sure you in the building and um, <laughs> I'm just a, I'm just a brother with a vision. Um, I come from a long line of visionaries and um, you know, men and fathers and family and everything is about family with me. And so, um, you know, just coming back, getting into this game fully, you know, I've been up, been down, and when I came up this time, I'm coming up harder and stronger and, and more positive and uh, more driven. And so I'm just a, a brother that's running two organizations, one for boys, one for fathers to the restor restoration of family and just making that difference as much as possible and bringing attention to suicide with boys five to 11. And I'm driven and I'm and I'm driving hard and people, you know, they can't put a, you know, one of them things you put on a horse with them saddles. Saddles. That saddles you and bridles and all that, that stuff. Because I'm going. Okay. 24, right. I wake up four, five. I'm going. So it's just important that uh, we change our mindset toward our boys and our men. And that's that's what I'm all about. Awesome. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and get into it and get into it. So we are talking about heart centered. And the reason that I invited the two of you here, and we have one more guest, America Supermom will be joining us shortly, um, is because we all have an inspiration or a reason behind the story. So I'm going to go ahead and share, share my screen here with you. And we're going to talk about, so what's your story? It's the segment for let me get to where I need to be, first of all. Um, so this is Pay Pro V Presents on the MLT Network. So what's your story? And this is a monthly series on how to write your story. So I do these once a month. They're free to you guys. And it provides an opportunity because everybody's like, oh, well, I don't have a story. Well, we know that 100% of everybody living or dead has a story. Uh, how you tell your story, if you tell your story, and the inspiration behind your story makes a difference. So I want to just right quick say thank you to our sponsors. Um, these are our sponsors. Um, Pay Pro V has a lot of support and I am so, so very grateful and so very thankful for that. So I want to acknowledge Legal Shield, uh, Johnny Brown with Legal Shield, uh, Kevin King with Alpha Aviation. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Yono clip, but if you're not, you better get you one. Bob Mackey and Michael Green, uh, they just appeared on Shark Tank and yes, they got an offer. So Damien uh, Dunn, I think that's his last name. 
um, is now their new business partner. So hit them up on that Yono clip. And then of course, Lachelle Atkins, America's super mom. She got 15 children, y'all. So y'all know she got a story. And then the diamond factor, Barbara Beckley, uh, great apparel, Darian Hardiman, and SM Design, Events and Design, Shaquana Mitchell. We wanna just say thank you so much for your support and for just saying yes, every time I pick up the phone. So we have a quick agenda today and the agenda is, so the introductions, we just did that. We just introduced Dr. Cecile Bolton and Calvin Mann. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about Just Start. So how to start writing your story. And just to recap quickly what we talked about last month, just in case you forgot. Um, then we're going to talk about writing from the heart, the heart of the story, and the heart of the story is why I invited these nice people here. Dr. Sunshine, um, Calvin Mann, encouraged me. I'm young. That blew me away. I am a, I am a follower. I am a supporter. And then, of course, America's Supermom, and then we're going to tell you how you can reach out to Pay Pro B Publishing and get your story on. How about that? Right. Okay, so what does this just start? So we talked about that last time. It's like, how do you start writing your story? Well, just start. Anything that you do, you have to start doing it. You have to start. If you want to get, if you're hungry, you got to start by making a move to get to the kitchen or wherever you got to get to to find food, you got to start. Um, to change your life in any aspect of life, you have to start. And writing your story is no different you have to start. So my idea of just start is number one, you got to set goals. You always set your goals with an end game in mind. So you can't say, okay, I'm gonna write a book and then you don't have any direction. So I'm gonna write a book, but I want to write my book. And by the time, by, you know, Thanksgiving, I want to be finished with my book, set your goals. Uh, within setting goals, find an accountability partner. We talked about that last time, uh, Mr. Kevin. Uh, uh, Kevin, did you have anybody call you that's going to be accountable? That that's saying you have you called up anybody and asked them how how they were coming on this story? Absolutely, sure did. Thank you. All right <laughs> then. And then we're gonna think positively. You can't do anything, you can't make any changes without thinking positively. Go from change the mindset, change the negative th the negative thinking, and then acknowledge your why. Why am I writing this story? Why am I writing my story or my book? And who is my audience? Am I writing the story to inspire? Am I writing the story to acknowledge or motivate? Am I writing the story to encourage? Am I writing the story to inform? So acknowledge your why, and then retrain your brain. You know, uh, somebody said to me before, you all, if you always do what you've always done, you're going to always get what you've always gotten. And that's in a nutshell. That means if you keep doing the same thing, looking for, looking for different results, what's, the def what's that definition, Mr. Calvin Man? Insanity. Insanity. That's insanity. So you got to retrain your brain and then take baby steps. You cannot, Rome was not conquered in a day. And you can probably write your story in a day, but if you're, if you're writing it too fast, you might miss something. So take baby steps. So then we're going to, so, so you just start, just start. And if you need help just starting, you can hit me up. You can email me. You can reach me on um, PayProV Publishing website, payprovpublishing.com, and we can help you. We walk you through the process. We hold your hand through it, okay? So what's the why behind your story? Okay, so I like this picture and my assistant who I'm, I'm, I'm honored that my assistant is here because he's usually not able to be here when we're doing these um, workshops. So he's here today, so I'm excited. But when he saw this picture, he was like, whoa. <laughs> he was like, that's kind of, I said, it's kind of, kind of creepy, isn't it? A little mystery, some energy going on. But if you take a walk with me and look at it, if you see the heart, how many of you see the heart in the story? Raise your hand if you see the heart in the story. You see the heart in the story, but how many of you also see the face in the story? You know, you see the eyes, you see the nose, there's a face, and then you see the mouth. It looks like it's a little split, but there's a mouth. And I like this picture because there is a story behind the heart. So you got to get through that story to get to the heart. So it's like the, the why behind your story. So I always tell people, you know, you can see that you can tell in your eyes, you know, you can't, you can't lie. The eyes don't lie. And you can look at some, somebody's eyes and you can tell if they look a little peaked. I used to tell my children when they didn't feel well, you okay? 
And they would say, yes. And I was like, you look a little peaked by the eyes. You know, when you're, when you're crying, the eyes tell the story. You get missy, your eyes start to tell the story first. You're laughing, Kevin, man. Am I telling the truth? Am tell I telling the truth? truth? It's in the eyes. It's in the eyes. Men are tough and they try to, but you can tell it in the eyes. You can see it in the eyes. So there is a, so there is a why behind your story, behind everybody's story. Now, why is it important? What's the importance of telling your story? So telling your story makes a difference to people that you come in contact with. So um, Calvin Mann, your story is important. The heart of your story is important because it makes the difference on how you connect with your audience or with the people who, you, who are in your, your fatherhood program or the young men that you connect with that you're trying to reach and that you're trying to save. Um, your story, you can't, you can't hide yourself within your story because it won't work. So your story makes a difference to the people that you are, that your, your clients, they, your story makes a difference. So there is a, there, your heart, your heart centered story. There's a why behind that story. So I know that you have, you, you have a hard stop at four o'clock, Mr. Uh, Calvin Mann. So I'm going to take a moment and let you share your story. What we want to know is what's the heart, what's the why behind your story? Um, why did you feel it necessary to start EMIY? What was, the, what, was the, what was the why behind the story? What's your heart-centered story? Would you mind sharing your heart-centered story with us, please? So EMIY was actually given to me, um, hold on, let me see, there we go, was actually given to me um, while working in an all white daycare. I never understood why we called each other the N word. I didn't care what nobody said. After seeing Roots, I never wanted to use the word again. Once I became an adult, I buried it, right? And um, it was not something that was in my home, right? And it's, it's funny how um, I just needed to find out. Coming from my story, my dream was taken. Adults took my dream, coaches, teachers, you know, I was very ambitious. And in 1992, I walked into a daycare to help, but I wanted to see what was the difference. What's the difference between how other cultures raise their children and how we raise ours, right? And immediately, one day I was sitting in the chair and the door blew open, just like, you know, a movie. In come the words, encourage me, I'm young. I called my uncle. At the time, I'm coaching varsity basketball. I'm the youngest varsity basketball coach in, in Ferndale High School history at 23. And I coach in varsity basketball, call my uncle, tell him about, encourage me, I'm young. We put it on our basketball team. Years later, after 40 young men going to college, I get out. I'm heartbroken because they don't give me the head job. I'm associate to him. But I had the head girls. And I'm heartbroken, devastated because I had a, I had a plan, full blown plan. I took my plan, my encourage me, I'm young plan and set it on a table at my second interview. Now they didn't want me to have the first interview but I got the second interview because the teacher spoke up. So I set my encourage me, I'm young plan on the table uh, and they just kept getting up in a room, being rude the whole nine. I said, hey, slide that back. I collected my stuff and I left. Right. Meantime, I left them with a number two state ranked team. They thought parents thought people thought that my uncle was the only one. They didn't know I was the developer of kids like that. They didn't know I was taking kids, turning them, putting them right into their dream. You, oh, you want to be a two guard? I'm going to make you a two guard. You want to be a point? I'm going to make you a point. You want to be a power forward? We're going to make you a power forward. Right. You want to be all American? OK, here's what it's going to take. Right. I was going to coaches clinics long before anybody else was going to coaches clinics. Right. And so when that process failed, I come into the city. Out of the suburbs, I come in the city and we go back to back championship middle school. All those kids I had. Right. I had a bunch of other kids behind that. Right. So if we still let the program, we probably be, you know, would have been on a national, completely different level of basketball. And. Then I got heartbroken again. It's like, man, it's nothing for me to do. So 
one day I'm sitting in the car with a friend. I'm being very egotistical. I was getting my name braided in my hair, all of that. And um, God spoke to me. And um, because I was reading the newspaper every day, which gets us back on to the reading. I was reading the newspaper every day. And every time I saw in the newspaper that there was a kid being killed. Right. And I couldn't understand that. Like, so I've been away from coaching. You don't really get all of that. You know, you just focus on the kids that's in your hand. But I realized there were a lot of children that were dying. So from hearing God's voice and taking action, um, I started getting these headaches. I started getting these affirmations. Three in a day, eight in a day, start writing them down. And, uh, and I don't even get headaches like that, right? And so I started searching, seeking, going to the church. And the pastor stood up, hey, Calvin, man, you better go see about them kids. You got a gift with, you know, the whole cliche thing, right? And I'm going, wow. And um, I started laying shirts where kids was getting killed in 2004. So I take one shirt, one affirmation. And the very first place I went to was my brother Courtney was his nephew. And I'm sitting in a bar, my brother got a artist and we sitting there, he getting ready to perform. And I see this image of a 12 year old being shot, taken out the garbage. Now, you know, where I come from, where we come from, my thought process is, I didn't realize that we had a thought process that that was okay. You know what I mean? I didn't know culturally that this was just something that, you know, we dismiss as close proximity. You know, everybody got all these excuses, but I, it just, I don't buy it, right? And so uh, one thing led to another and um, I saw this and I called to check on my brother and he told me, hey man, did you see the 12 year old? I said, no, he was like, that was my nephew. He was like, wow. So I ended up meeting his mom for the first time and the whole family and his cousin, the 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 in-law, his brother-in-law come out and just latch on to me in the shirt. So that was the first place. And then the last place was 2018 where my niece was murdered, getting off a bus. Wow. Right. And um, I, I give the number, but I'm sure it's probably more than that, but I say 630, right. During that period of time. And, but in 2006, I helped a mom in 2007, she gave me my nonprofit. And that's how we have encouraged me. I'm young. Wow. Wow. What a powerful, powerful story. Wow. So we understand that telling our story helps other people sharing our story because you could have, you could have kept that vision to yourself and not shared it with anybody. You could have used that vision to fund your own, your own thing um, for your own personal reasons, but you decided to use it to help other people and help young people. And that's important, that's important. So tell me, tell, tell us about your, um, you, you have the Encourage Me I'm Young, and then you have the fatherhood. Um, that you work with father. So tell us a little bit about that. And what's the heart behind the story? So I used to always say, and as a matter of fact, before I came on, I was talking to one of the guys that, right, I always asked men and had always asked men, were they a good father? And um, in 2008, I, you know, 2007, I'm getting ready to process you know, my logos, take them to the lawyer, the trademark, the whole nine. And I had to, I had this super dead conversation, right? It was super dead. And I was like, I can't use super dead, super dead. Somebody already got right. And so I was, I sat down and I drew my own logo, good fathers only. And I took it to the lawyer. And when I took it to the lawyer, what was incredible was, what was incredible was it was, it was like too close to the GE logo. So it took a long time for me to get it. Since then, copyright, everything, right? But my whole point was fatherhood never celebrated itself. Mm -hmm. 
we never value or showed the value to fatherhood. We was just, you're just another dad. You're just another father. What separated us? We didn't look no different from the banker, the robber, the murderer, the, you know, the professional. We didn't look different. And so I kept saying, as I met men, are you a good father? And they would say, yeah, I'd say, oh yeah, babe, good fathers only. It was that simple. And so uh, my whole point was to unite fatherhood, to celebrate fatherhood, right? Because what makes a young man want to be a father? We make it sound so bad, right? What would make a young man want to be a father? So we begin to celebrate it, right? I begin to swag it. So first time I popped the trunk with the t-shirts, I was at a Dad's Day Out event with the former mayor Kwame Kilpatrick and a few other people. And when I popped that trunk, the man was in that trunk buying them shirts. So from there, I was walking through the park. It's another park. So I was at one park, I drive to another park and I'm walking through the families and I'm telling you the, the no, nah, I'm straight, you know, the reaction. Oh uh, uh, yeah, you know, Oh man, we don't need that. You know, I don't need that to prove, you know, I heard all of that, but I walk up on these five young men. One of the five, as I'm approaching with the back of the shirt and it says good fathers only as I'm approaching, he begins to take steps backwards. Right. And as I get closer, they like, Oh yeah, I want one. I want one. Matter of fact, I want two. Right, they order and he study tickets. Say, yo, 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 bro, what's happening? And he stopped and said, "Man, I ain't no good father." Oh wow. He's like, I ain't seen my kids in years, man, and I owe a hundred and some thousand in child support. And walked away, and that's when I knew. It's bigger than that. It's much bigger than that, right? But we celebrated. We've done eleven years of celebrating in the. A Labor Day parade, celebrating fatherhood, making noise as loud as we can make in the Labor Day parade. Fatherhood is a union. If we do it right, we could change the demographics of family, the whole nine. So that's my story behind why fatherhood is so important. Plus, fatherhood is um, is life. Fatherhood helps you live longer. For those who have fathers, they live longer, right? Mm -hmm. You have some exceptions to the rule, but when dad is in the play, dad brings a certain ingredients. Young ladies don't have periods fast when the father is in the play, right? So we got a lot of things that we bring to the table, that ingredient, that secret sauce that fathers bring. To me, that's the relationship with God where we're broken. But in that process, fatherhood answers all things that are wrong. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. Because 92% of what's wrong comes from the fatherless home. Wow. So wow. that's why fatherhood is so important um, to, to what we were talking about. So that's why it lines up on our end, boys, men, husbands, fathers. And that story I told you the other day about one of my fathers not seeing his kids, it's Katrina, mm -hmm. and it boxed me. And his son is now 18 and hit him up on Facebook. See, you know, some, some people have problems with Facebook. It depends. It's just like with anything, how you use it. It can be a tool used for good. And it is. It, it depends on how you use it. There, there's a lot of ratchet stuff going on on Facebook. Isn't oh, that no, right, Mr. Kevin? <laughs> yep. There's a lot of stuff going on, but it's a great tool because it, it allows you to reach the masses and it allows you to find people people that you you can't go to their house and see where they are you can't find them on the street you can find them look them up on Facebook and somebody knows somebody who knows them right so that's a wonderful wonderful thing um so thank you so much so um Calvin man tell tell us how we can reach you if, if we we have fathers um Mr um Willie Harrison has joined the call so we have fathers if they are they are looking and they're interested in being a part of the um you know, encourage me. I'm young, or the fatherhood program. How can they reach you? Uh, you can reach me at uh, www.emiyworld.com, and you can get the Good Fathers Only right there. We getting ready to relaunch the Good Fathers Only store. When I tell you, we got pieces for daddies. 
you know what I mean? I we we went all the way even for the Godfather, right? <laughs> we got one okay. for the Godfather, you know what I mean? But we want to make sure that we continue our goal for what we're doing for fatherhood. But you go to Emmy World and you can get us right there. You can hit me on the inbox. You can Facebook fan page. Instagram is at Emmy World. Twitter is at Emmy World. And um, we, you know, we just making a, a difference, you know, the Emmy way. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Kevin Man, for sharing the heart of your story, the why behind your story. And so now I want to go back and I want to ask, I'm um, going to introduce, um, oh, okay, Mr. Willie sent us a message and said he's in and out. Um, so he's out, he's in it, he's out with his wife. So he's, he may have to catch us on the next one. And that's okay. We understand. So Dr. Cecile Bolton, uh, I am so excited about her. Have you, are you guys and I, and I know we're comparing is not all that great sometimes, but have you, uh, Mr. Mann and, uh, uh, Kevin, how, are you guys familiar with Mr. Rogers neighborhood? <laughs> Absolutely. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Absolutely. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? My neighbor. <laughs> right. So the first time I heard um, Dr. Sunshine, that's what it reminded me of. Now she <laughs> is an original, but that's what it reminded me. It took me back to those Saturday mornings when I was sitting there watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And I want you, Cecile, take a time. And, and um, America Supermom has just joined us. Thank oh, you that, so much. That's the lady um, with all the children. This is with 15 <laughs> children. Her story is fascinating. And look, her, her story leave, leaves no and needs no introduction. Right, Lachelle got all the babies. You didn't, you didn't tell me you had all the babies. <laughs> <laughs> So we're gonna. Uh, I want Miss always Ms. taking donations for them babies. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> well, they gotta eat. They gotta eat. Um, so Cecilia, you please uh, introduce yourself. You, you already introduced yourself, but tell us about your your heart of the story, your why behind your story, um, and and if you don't mind, uh, give us a little piece of that introduction that I love so much when you introducing when you're starting your um, your story time. I sure will. All right, guys. So before we get started, let's make sure we grab a couple of things. You need to grab your Bev. I have my sup cup here. My Bev is ready. Take a sip. Mm -hmm. So good. Make sure you grab a snack for yourself and get something comfy. Something comfy could be a blanket or a blankie, whichever you choose to say. It could be a teddy bear. It could be mommy or daddy. Whatever it is to make you feel relaxed. Okay, and then we got it. You ready? And we can snap like this. Hey, 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 come on. Now you can clap like that. Whatever's easiest. Oh, oh, here we go. Story time with Dr. V. Call me sunshine if that's easy. Sit back, relax, and get comfy. So happy to have you here with me. Yes, I am so excited to have all of you here with Dr. Sunshine, yeah. <laughs> a little taste. And as Ms. Park said, I actually described myself as Mr. Rogers meets Reading Rainbow with a sprinkling of Zubilee Zoo, which I know about Zubilee Zoo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that was three of my faves. So, <laughs> That's thank you again, Ms. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you again, Ms. Parks, for having me here. I am super excited, as you can tell. I'm small, smiling like ear to ear. But um, the, my heart, the heart-centered story that I have is that I've always been um, into theater. I've always been, you know, on stage for theater. <laughs> Uh, behind the microphone, uh, ever since I was a child, preschool, I've been acting. I also went to high school. I was in the magnet uh, program for theater, musical, um, musical theater, uh, drama, chorus, all those things. I've even been in the band at a point. But I am a, um, I'm a person, I'm a child of the arts. I'm an adult of the arts and I'm very animated. And so um, right now, of course, I am an educator. And that is because I have a background, my, my mother, grandmother, we have a slew of educators in our family. 
But in college, I majored in journalism, mass comm, theater, uh, radio, TV, film, all those good things. So with all those things going on that I have in my background, I became a teacher. And I know you're like, wait a minute, how, what, what, what? <laughs> so I did that to kind of have some, you know, stability with a career while I still am focusing on or was focusing on where I wanted to go as far as my actual passions in life, which are still theater, writing, the journalism piece, radio, TV, all those things. I've always wanted to have a TV show, always, because I feel like at the classroom, we have a, a wonderful time, but I feel like it's the box. Yeah. And I actually use the classroom as a stage so you can catch me performing daily from 8 to 2.30. <laughs> but we do have a good time. And but I use that to, I've used that to help me develop the criteria for not only this show, but for also writing my own books. And so both of those initiatives are what guided me towards the vision of Dr. Sunshine Presents LLC. So I have two endeavors that I started both in June, which positive of the pandemic, I was able to do because I had the time. Um, also, when I was in my doctoral program, you know, a lot of stuff going on, I didn't really have the time or the focus to be able to do the things that I'm doing now. And for that, I'm grateful for the pandemic and that's the only reason, okay? The time to do things and to use the time wisely, you know? Because many people have actually done this as well that I know and people, strangers that I've seen, you know, making moves. And so the two endeavors I have, the first is Books Before Bedtime. So with Books Before Bedtime, that takes place every Tuesday and Thursday on Zoom. And of course, Zoom uh, came to me because of, education. We had to immediately jump and transition to using Zoom to teach. We actually use Google first, but we transitioned to Zoom soon after. But just using those platforms helped me to figure out how I could get something I've always wanted to do off. I could get it started. And so I just, one day I said, I'm going to do a story time and I'm just going to send it out. I'm going to send a link created on Survey Monkey, and I'm going to see what happens. I took some time, and it's funny because I was going through my phone last night looking at all the voice memos I made of creating the song that we just sang together, creating my goodbye song, creating my feeling song, because I wanted everything to be as original as possible, um, because I wanted to have as much Dr. Sunshine, as much Cecile as possible. Okay, because I want it. And when people come, children, I have adults that come just to listen. And that is super flattering. And so I want it to feel like we're at home. We're here together and we're, we're chilling, you know, and I'm reading a good story with extra on it, you know, and uh, <laughs> and like, yeah, I just want you to feel comfortable. And so I focus a lot on mess ups. I don't do a lot of editing because it's real life, which kind of reminds me of Mr. Rogers, because he was in his home, you know, his set home, but he was in his home. You felt comfortable with Mr. Rogers, right? And so if I mess up, I'll say something like, no, you know, I wasn't supposed to say that word. Let's rewind back and do it. Because I want you to, I just want you to feel like you already know me, okay? And then I, I like it to be very personable. So I like to shout out names. I, I honor birthdays for children if the parents provide those. I give shout outs on my social media. So I want you to feel like you know me and I know you. And we're getting to know one another. So back to Books Before Bedtime. So that's what we do Tuesdays and Thursdays. And of course, it's free registration, birth to seven. But I also put on there that all are welcome. As I said, some adults come too. And I love it. Also with uh, my Saturdays, Saturday mornings, I have my Black Children's Author Showcase. And my goal there is to showcase Black children's authors in an effort to celebrate our culture through literature, okay? And I'm reading endorsed and all that good stuff, so I kind of have an inkling on what that looks like. However, I believe that we all need a platform for our culture because a lot of times we don't hear about us, you know? and as an aspiring author myself, who I know one day soon, because I actually have some illustrations going on now, but soon I want to be at a point where someone's reading my story in addition to me. So, you know, the little people, 
we need the, that boost as well. And the little people have to have the little people, which soon will all become medium big people. <laughs> <laughs> But we all need that lift and that foundation and that support to be able to do so. So I just said, hey, Cecile, just do it. Just be like Nike, one of my favorites. Just, just do it. it. And exactly. So, hello. And I mean, I have a great support system from my family, my parents. And you talked about fatherhood, Mr. Man, my dad, amazing. My mom, fabulous. My brother and sister, they get tired of me taking pictures, videos, this, this but they understand and they appreciate it at the same time because I have a big, and it's so funny, Ms. Parks, that you were talking about just getting started earlier because we had a special ed parent night at my school last night and I presented my um, presentation on vision and the, it's centered around parents knowing that their children, regardless of an exceptionality, can soar, okay? Right. They can have a goal. They can reach the goal. You may have different routes because everyone has a different route to get there. But as long as you have a vision and a goal, it can be done. Okay. And one of the icebreakers I used was making toast. And the point of it, the purpose was, how do you make toast? Right? The goal, of course, is toast. But how, what is your process to getting there? Some of us use Cheesecake Factory's brown bread at Kroger. Hint, it's there, guys. Sliced. It's delicious. Some of us chose honey wheat bread, white bread. Some of us use a toaster. Some use the oven. Some pan fry. So different ways to get to that one goal, but we all know there's a journey. I told them, sometimes it's going to be burned. Yep. That's your obstacle. So are you going to, you're hungry. So are you just going to be like, well, forget it. I'm not going to make it. Or are you going to figure out another way to do it? Are you going to set the timer a little lower? What are you going to do? Because you still have to meet your goal. So those are some of the things that I spoke to the parents about last night and have prior um, regarding their vision, because we focus a lot on the school aspect and what they need to do for their grades and goals and objectives and whatever. But you know your child can succeed, right? Mm -hmm. So they just need a little push. And so that was, I just had to say that because you spoke about that earlier. So That's like, beautiful. I, I love that. I love that. The, the Bible teaches us, Proverbs says, without vision, the people perish. And that's the first, that 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 kind of goes back to something we talked about the other day, um, Mr. Calvin Mann, that we teach our children everything. We teach them how to use the bathroom. We teach them how to go potty. We teach them how to, but this is before they leave the home. So mm -hmm. as a parent, that's your first source of the world. So if your parent, is if as a parent, you don't think your child can succeed or soar, then they are already, they, they, they've already failed. And it takes having to go out into the world and prayerfully and hopefully somebody finds them and takes them to another another level that they need to go to. So I, I like that. You you know, I like the way you said it. You know your child can succeed, right? You know your child has the potential to do take and that's time. important. You do it. Mm -hmm. and, that, and the whole premise of that was a vision board. Of course, we couldn't do it virtually, but I challenged them to make a vision board because mm -hmm. I my first vision board was last year uh, as a part of the um, pageant. And I missed the um, meeting where we did vision boards, mm -hmm. but my sister and I decided to do one of our own because I thought it was necessary and I still wanted to participate even though I couldn't be there. But many of the things, and I've heard about vision boards and how they really, you know, things come to fruition. And I was like, I need to try. Yes, Miss Parks. Yes, mine is all the way upstairs. I'd go get it if I could. But, <laughs> but yes, I mean, everything may not happen on there in your in the moment within the year. That's but right. it does not mean there's not there hasn't been a start to it happening. So yeah. just one to pull out from my um, vision board from last year. I had a, you know, an African-American woman in the middle, first of all, wearing heels because I'm a wedges and tennis shoes. I had to get into the heels for the pageant. That's another story. So I had her in heels and I had queen here and just, you know, positive affirmations. You're going to win. Do the, and I really had it in my mind. I got to the point where I was like, I know I'm going to win. And I looked at it every day among the other things that I had on the vision board. And though my crown is sitting right there, y'all, and my trophies. Yeah, because though I did not win the major crown, because I didn't say which crown, I just had queen up there, right? Because I know I'm a queen, we're all queens, kings, yes. 
but I won the one that was meant for me. And the That's funny right. thing about vision is that the bathing suit I had, because I, I miss swimwear 2020, right? So the bathing suit I had, I thought, you know, I was like, okay, I, I, I feel this. I, I, I got this. I had never worn it. I was like, I'm wearing that one because it's super cute. I came across this up uh, this new bathing suit. And as soon as I saw the bathing suit, I saw the vision. I saw me winning. I knew it was like a prophecy. I saw it happening. And that's the one I won. As soon as I saw it, I put the whole outfit together. I had the hair, the jewelry, the this, the that. And that's the category I won because that's the one that I focused on. I had the vision for. And, you know, that that's it. And I also won People's Choice. So I was runner up for the major crown as well. So that's still good. But just, you know, a small. You wrote the vision. You wrote the vision. There was the vision and that vision board. So I really hope that those parents do that. But um, same with both, B, you know, I call them BBB, Books Before Bedtime, and Bacass is the um, ch Black Children's Author Showcase. But I just want, you know, the authors to have a place to go, whether they're new, up and coming, or even established. It does not matter because we're all here for a purpose and that's to support one another, especially right now. Yeah. Because, you know, that's been our focus. Black Lives Matter. Of course, all lives matter, but Black lives really matter right now because it's pivotal that people understand the struggle that we have. And we're just trying to get over that hump, but we can't do it unless we do it all together. Absolutely. And so, um, you know, but these are just small pieces of what I'm, I'm trying to do my part. And I also um, showcase Black, um, oh, I, yes, we have to talk, and Black-owned um, businesses. My brother is one. I have several <laughs> friends. And um, I try to highlight them as well within my readings on Saturdays. Okay. And so I'm just, you know, like I said, just trying to do my part um, as someone who is also trying to follow their vision and reach that goal, so. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing your heart story with us, your, the center, your heart centered story. So um, I, I see Mr. Calvin is holding up his, his book and, and, and I, I, think, I think my vision seeing that, you know, sometime in the near future, um, I'm seeing the adventures of o, o, Oba and Luther on Dr. Sunshine Presents. Mm -hmm. So you guys need to connect. So if, if somebody like Mr. Calvin Mann is interested in showcasing their book on your platform, what do they need to do? How can they reach you? Well, you can definitely follow me on Instagram at Dr. Sunshine Presents LLC. And that's all one word, no periods, any type of punctuation. So again, Dr. Sunshine Presents, plural, LLC. And you can email me with the uh, subject line BCAS inquiry to uh, notlob classics, the number six at gmail.com. And notlob is just my last name backwards. So notlob classics, plural again, the number <laughs> six <laughs> at gmail.com. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. So we know that, so we, we ha we've had Calvin Mann to talk about the fatherhood program. And Calvin, I wanna ask you a question um, before we get to uh, America's Supermom. Um, you, you mentioned to me several times that the, the suicide rate for boys between the age of five and 11, um, can you give us a little bit of information about that and the statistics on that? And so you have, you have America's Supermom and I know you have to rush off in a minute. Yeah. You have, um, you know, Two, two powerhouses in their own right. And then of course you have Paper V Publishing over here. What is it that we can do or we can say, or we can, you know, how can we help with this on our um, perspective platforms? So our smash suicide campaign, right, is to raise the awareness that boys five to 11 are committing suicide, right? Black boys. And um, the, the help that is needed is beyond, um, it's, it's you advocating for the Smash Suicide Campaign. It's you uh, giving the gift of encouragement to kids. It's you uh, going to our website, uh, clicking the Smash Suicide button on Emmy World, downloading the Emmy way and applying that to your home, your schools, your community. Engage, empower, and encourage 
that formula I've carried for 35 years to the success of males, not losing not one male, and actually inspiring over 16,000 youth moving to do more. Um, um, our message on the Smash Suicide campaign is very, very simple. Uh, we're not getting into the intricate parts of, well, go doctor this. No, when it gets to that, we automatically refer our children, bless you, to the level of um, making sure that if it's psychological, when it's time to get a doctor, we go to the doctor. In the meantime, sometimes you don't, right? Uh, there's legislation for the uh, the number being changed to 98. I just connected with some people there, the op-ed, but your help is really pushing that Emmy way, making sure that you engage your boys, you empower your youth and you encourage them, right? And that free download is on my website. You put it in your schools. I guarantee you what Dr. Sunshine was, she was just talking about uh, and how her students interact. It comes from her engagement with them right? Um, we have to do education differently, right? So boys, we have to begin to look at partnering boys like we do in our mentoring program with those who might have a higher GPA, right? And sitting them at the table and begin to build that relationship in peer because a peer can be very much a, a good teacher to a student that does not believe in themselves. So putting the right peers together, the whole nine. But that's our formula. That's our system. I just released another petition for change.org. You can grab that off my, my uh, Facebook, share it with your people, and you guys can get it from her. But more importantly, we have to raise the awareness, right? So if you got any media connections where we can send the op-ed, right? If you know you need me to come talk to your students, if you need us to have the conversation, I just know this encouragement piece is powerful, right? Uh, there was a 40 year study done by um, uh, the pediatricians network uh, for 40 years, they studied what's the best way to raise a kid and encouragement is the best way to do it. Sometimes we have to get in in order to get out. And a lot of times we don't understand that. We can no longer project to our boys and just saying, this is what you're supposed to be, right? Versus what have you taught me, right? And I just had this big conversation where we were talking about literacy. And what you just said is important with Dr. Shen. Before the child leaves the house, you got to give them some tools. You know, sending them to a school where racism is sitting there the whole nine. Black boy is the most kicked out of school kid from, from the daycare. And it don't matter what daycare. It's a black, blue, pink, white, don't matter what they care, they kicking that boy out, right? And so he's the most kicked out of education from daycare to through college. Don't matter, he's the first fired on the job, right? Doesn't matter, he's always the target, right? But in that process, if we don't give them those tools, to, if we don't give them the tool to read, right? He'll never take the time to lead. Oh, oh! Oh, you didn't catch that. If we never give them the tools to read, they'll never take the time to lead. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. You are absolutely right. You got it. I, I, I believe that. I have a male child, um, a young man. And yes. I, I, I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. So, so yeah. So go to Emmy World. Get you a, a Encourage Me I'm Young t-shirt, hat something get it to the kids you know what i mean every Pretty bit tall. this is how we stayed here you want that emmy in your house i'm telling you once you get it on the kids it's hard to get them out of any the adults <laughs> i love what we do absolutely thank you so much so tell us one more time how we can get in touch with you www.emmyworld.com and i got to give you a sneak peek just a sneak peek i want you to hear this <laughs> Yeah.
We coming. We coming. We coming, the queen. We coming. We coming for the best. All right. All right. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I'm dropping the promo tomorrow. We coming. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. Um. So, are when you coming? Are you coming by Atlanta? Georgia. I'll definitely anytime you want me, I will come by Atlanta. Okay. I told okay. you. All right. Whatever All right. you want. You got me. So whatever you want to do in Atlanta to bring Emmy, I'm coming. I told All you right. I'm down there. That is not a problem. I go where the word go and okay. where the word take me and where the vision go. We go okay. where that go. All right. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So thank you so much, Calvin. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. For... I'm, I'm gonna jump on this anti-bullying uh thing with Google and uh and see if I can't make some more noise about this man's suicide. So I appreciate you. I love you. I love you all. Michelle, you owe me $5. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> Look, I, I, I'm I'm thinking you need to make me a theme song so I can have my little theme song going. I know, that's right. We all need a theme song. Uh, Dr. Sunshine got her theme song. We need right. some, we, listen. Well, I, I have done jingles and I do have, I, it's one jingle that I'm trying to, put out for Kentucky Fried Chicken to get them to give us some money. So I do have, you know, I have done jingles and, um, you know, to a very high level, right? So mm -hmm. the Ford Motor Company, things like that. But I got this one for Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's all acapella. And uh, and I just want to, I want to, when I drop it, I want to make sure that our story is tagged to it. Right? I like that. So we can raise, I need to raise some more money to build our empowerment center because you know they give them they gonna give us a hard time. You you're trying to build something, right? <laughs> well, I you know what I don't even bring, uh, go with that philosophy anymore. I live in a bubble. Okay, yeah, I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah, you yeah. know, and you got to start declaring things. Well, I do. I, I see what I, I'm that's saying. Why I keep going. I don't let it stop me. I'm saying, but yeah, you know, people always tell you a certain thing, right? They say, well, you can't. Well, you need to do this. You got to kiss this ring. Then you got to kiss that ring. I say, well, you know, this is my agency, right? This ain't something somebody else started. This ain't, you know, this ground up. This this come out of my pocket, my goals, my visions, what God told me to do. I stuck to it. So if I have to rely on that, we wouldn't be where we are right now. Amen. Well, you know, he says the word doesn't return to you void. So you got to start speaking with authority and declaring those things that are not as though they are, regardless of what I'm other people been on like. my site, sister. You, you see what I'm saying? What Cal talking about. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's all this you got to do. This is, yeah. not, this yeah. is Don't awesome. even acknowledge them. What does yeah. Jesus yeah. say? Shake so, the dust off yeah. of your sandals and, and keep, keep it, it moving. Keep it moving. You keep see what going. I'm saying? Keep it yeah. moving. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Calvin. This has been Not great. So we're talking about your heart-centered story. So thank you, Calvin, for sharing the thank heart you. of your story. I got to make sure I get why. this clip because I know Lachelle's story. I got to hear this. Where you pull these 15 kids from? <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, that that sound like a that sound like a really good transition. So 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 now so we're we're talking for for those who just joined in who are listening out there in in Zoom land. Um, Kelvin Kelvin um, Vaughn, you still there with us? You just enjoyed yeah, it. That's my man. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome. Oh, How y'all doing? Y'all having a good time, ain't you? <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, this is Heart Centered with your awesome, awesome host today, Sister Laquita Park. She is amazing. Our guests are amazing. Brother Man, Sister Mama, Super Mama, and Sister and Dr. Volton, you guys are awesome. I love you guys, man. Hey, back to you. Cam did the back to school rally with me in Atlanta. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, yeah. We enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, come day. on, look, we. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, I'm here. I'm here. I know that's <laughs> right. I'm here. And also, hey. too, uh, hey, Calvin, real quick, you mentioned about fundraising and everybody else. I've got a contact in Atlanta. You need to talk to her, uh, lindachapman.com. Linda Chapman, she had, they, they talk about, this is government funds, guys. Just talk about, you talk about $9 billion available out there, okay? She will help you get the money, but you got to talk to her, Linda Chapman. Dot I'm in Atlanta too. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah. That's one of my contacts. We work with another There's program so right now uh, in that area. 
we, uh, but you want to, we, we write gotta, it. We got to go after this money because the money is there to help build our communities better. And, that's right. Uh, but uh, but again, Linda Chapman, that's with a M O M O N. And uh, but I'll be glad to text it to you later if you like. But definitely need to get in touch with her, make an appointment to initially talk to her and see if you guys qualify for that money. The money's there. I had her on my radio program months back. I asked her specifically, how come nobody's getting the money? Because nobody's going to get the money. She said, it's there, but you got to go through the process. It's amazing. Right. amazing. Yeah, so anyway, we partner, we partner with Urban Awareness. And Urban yeah. Awareness um, has, you know, they have, they're writing grants for us every month. Yeah, yeah. And helping right. us. Yeah, the money's out there. On that. Yeah. And yeah. so, uh, but yeah, yeah, you three. Yeah, and like, and like Sister Mom, yeah. I already followed you on, on Instagram. I appreciate Amen. it, man. All right, let's like do Sister it. Mom, and like right. Mom said, you got to go after it, man. She said, folks yeah. who are hungry, you got to be hungry, man. And you like, hey, man. Right. Who, hey, you hey, Kev. Like, hungry. Kev, yeah. who, 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 your, your man, tell yeah. me your man don't get out. Absolutely, man. We know you <laughs> yeah. hungry, bro. Look, I'm just, I'm just helping you raise the bar. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Asian. We, we Asian. double Asian. where you at. We going higher. You know I what I mean? I tell you, you listen, we got <laughs> vision. Listen, you got to, you got to, you got to be pulled up. You know what I'm saying? Transcendent vision. Let's go. And you That's know, what I, I'm saying. That Let's go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, it has been really, really, it's, it's been fun. Uh, the short, the short time I've known Calvin, man, we're, 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 we just partnered on a project together. So I'm going to see where this train leads Calvin, man, but I'm here in Georgia and Dr. Sunshine mm -hmm. is here in Georgia and super mom is here in Georgia. So we here, Put it together. so we ready. We My ready. 501c3 go wherever you go. And we hear you. We know that. <laughs> Good to know. Sound like a sound like a five right. a five a five center per collaboration right here. For them babies. For the babies. Right. For the babies. Right. For the babies. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> so now this is I'm telling you this has been really really wonderful and we're talking about heart center so we're talking about every story has a why what's the why behind your story so thank you so much to Calvin Mann with uh Emmy encourage me I'm young and the fatherhood program that he has he's doing some great things up in Detroit but like he just said his nonprofit goes wherever the need is so we're going to see if we can get him down here to do some things in Georgia. Um, Dr. Sunshine, don't forget that contact. So I'm going to contact you. We're going to all do something together. So with that being said, um, I want to share my screen again just quickly with Dr. Um, with, with America's Supermom. So we're talking about the, your heart center, why, the why behind your story. Mm -hmm. And... So there is no, here's some quotes that I like. One by Maya Angelou. There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you, mm -hmm. okay? And that's important from the two stories that we just heard uh, with Calvin Mann and Dr. Seal, Dr. Cecile Bolt and Dr. Sunshine. And I love her story because she's getting to the heart of the matter. So a lot of times the there's, you know, parents are working and sometimes we're so tired when we come in, we just have enough time to get the children bathed, get some food in them and get them to bed. We're too tired to read a bedtime story. So if we can put on a videotape or, 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 or put a, put a YouTube on for them to, to, for them to hear something that they don't know about, then why not put your, put that same uh, Instagram video or YouTube on for them to hear a bedtime story with Dr. Sunshine. Um, I think that's amazing. Yes, I, I love it, I love it. And you can't really change the heart without telling a story. So a lot of times, especially in business, we don't know people, we don't know what they're going through. They have a story that is yet to be told. Sometimes people keep it inside of them. They can't share their story. And it affects them greatly. It also affects how they maneuver and deal with people. And in business, when you're trying to deal with people, sometimes when you know their story, you know best how to handle them. You know what to, you know what to say and what to deal with, how to deal with it. So your story has the power to ease and uplift. So with that being said, I'm going to stop sharing because this is going to be good. 
I would love to introduce, and, and, and I'm sure you guys already know, or, or if, if you have it, you're in for a treat. This is Lachelle Atkins, America's Supermom. And I'm gonna let her tell y'all why she's America's Supermom, okay? So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Miss Lachelle Atkins, America's Supermom. Um, tell us your heart-centered story. Thank you so much, Laquita, for this opportunity. I am just blessed to be here today. It's a pleasure to meet you, Dr. Sunshine. And Kevin, who is behind the scenes, you know, even though he's always working, I want to say uh, hello to him also. Um, yes, you have said that I'm America's super mom. My husband and I have 15 children. And currently we have seven of them who are doing e-learning at this time. So this week they're on a little bit of a winter break, which uh, is uh, good for me. You know, we, we don't have that structure this week. So, you know, it's uh, a little bit of everything going on here. But, um, you know, my story begins with me being an only child. So I was raised where academics was very important. And I just had the mindset that, you know, it's all about doing good, getting the accolades, receiving the certificates and all the notoriety that goes from working hard and doing what it takes to be the best. So when I had a family and as this family started growing and growing and growing, I just felt like a failure because I was on one side doing things good academically, but when it comes to transferring that into family and home life, it is a totally different scenario from uh, figuring out how to keep the house in order, you know, keeping it clean, uh, helping kids with their homework, managing your time, looking after everybody. So this was a challenge for me and I struggled with depression for 13 years, I was hospitalized three times. And, you know, I just look at how good God is because he transformed that story that I thought was such a negative thing into something positive to allow me to empower other women to know what strategies they need to have in order to live their best life. So I sum my story up with the media and uh, I use all platforms, anything I can find to empower women and educate them about one, what depression looks like. Because for me, I was actively taking my kids to school, taking them to soccer, uh, going to church. You know, my husband's a pastor, going to special events because he was also an officer in the military. So, you know, I packed probably at least 30 events into a week on a regular basis. So I thought, how could I be depressed, right? And so I'm all about really empowering women with the education to know that depression looks different for everybody. And there is a solution to the problem. It's about, you know, I don't know if it was Calvin who said it about having the right tools in your toolbox so that you can move forward and be the best version of yourself. So when we talk about media, you know, I am just love acronyms. That's one of the ways that I keep it straight. And it just helps me dig deeper than looking at things face value, but understanding the meaning behind stuff. So in addition to being a mother of 15, I'm a podcast host. I'm a speaker, an author. I write for uh, magazines and any platform that I could use to really just put that message of, you know, you already are enough out there to women is what I use to be able to help us all be the best versions of ourselves. So when we break down the word media, the first thing we find is our mindset. I am still in that process. My last hospitalization was 2016. So that's just five years ago. And I am daily working on my mindset. I am working to unlearn a lot of the limiting beliefs that I uh, was taught, such as, you know, well, as a mom, you're staying at home, you need to be making three square meals, you know, till one day I realized, you know, Subway is making a lot of money <laughs> having sub sandwiches and chips. So it's okay if my kids have a sandwich every once in a while or some hot dogs, you know. But for years, I struggled with feeling like I wasn't doing enough because I was at home because I wasn't making these gourmet meals, three square meals a day. 
So it's about your mindset really determining what it is that you are wanting to achieve each day. I was so stuck with trying to people please that I really didn't know what that was. I had lost my identity. I could, you could ask me what my favorite color was and I'd be thinking it was an SAT question because I didn't really have the bandwidth to sit down and really reflect think about what I was doing. I was just on autopilot robotic mode and it was a life that was unfulfilling. So the first change that a lot of us need to make is transforming our mindset. So just as I mentioned to uh, Calvin, you know, we have to declare things, right? So we can believe stuff, we can talk about it, but you have to declare, when you declare things, it comes with authority and you start walking as if it's already taken place before people validate it for you, right? So when you're changing your mindset, it is saying, you know what, today's going to be a great day. Now we can't control everything that comes our way, but we can control our mindset and our actions. Mm -hmm. Because if you handle your mindset, that's going to put your actions on the right path, right? So if I'm believing that I'm going to be happy it's going to take a lot to not get me down, right? Because I'm already declaring that I'm going to be happy. See, having good days, bad days just are, you know, it's the part of being human. You're going to have things that are outside of your control, but it doesn't have to steal your joy, the things that are inside that you bring to any situation. So just imagine when you lose a loved one or you don't get that promotion or you know, things just don't work out the way you thought they would work out. If you didn't have joy, you would still be where that situation left you years ago. We, we would not even be having this conversation. So you have to make sure that there's a balance. These things happen. We just don't get stuck. We got to keep it moving. Yes. The next thing is your ego, getting it in check. So I really had a hard fall because I was raised thinking that I could do it all, right? I had, I had this belief system, oh, if I work hard enough, you know, I can get this thing done. I don't need help. I don't have to ask for help because I have all the answers. I know everything. But it wasn't until I really sat myself down and said, hey, you don't know everything. You're looking crazy, right? Because you're saying these things, but you're unhappy. You're lying to yourself and other people. So once I was able to put my ego down, I was able to have a life that was more freeing and it made me more happy because I was able to be the real me. I didn't have to create this scenario that I had all the answers. It was exhausting. You know, I was trying to be the best first lady. I was trying to be the best uh, class mom trying to be the best, you know, officer's wife, just running around crazy. So um, when you let your ego go, you're able to be happy being you and accepting the good and the bad and learning how to work it to be the best version of yourself. The next thing is discipline. So this is just the things you do daily. What are you listening to? Who are you talking to? What is your, uh, ha what are your habits, right? Are these things serving you? Are they helping you move closer to your goals? And a lot of people, we talk about meditation. And so, so many people are like, you know, that's some woo-woo stuff or, you know, I don't think I can meditate, but we meditate on negative stuff all the time. You know, I know because I've been there. Oh, this isn't going to work out. And, you know, my kids are always doing this or I just don't have enough money. All that's meditation but it's a meditation on the wrong thing. It's negative. It is bringing those things to life because you're thinking about them day in, day out, hour by hour, minute by minute. So you just have to learn to be disciplined to line up the things that you want with your actions. So that is about discipline. The next thing is seeking to inspire. When you have a story, you want your story to start a movement, right? It doesn't do any good. I've already been delivered from depression. So for me to get up here and be like, yes, you know, I made it through. God is good. All about me. That's not inspiring anybody. The story is designed for people to see 
the similarities because so often we don't get started because we're like, oh, I can't get started. You know, she had everything going for her. So that's why it worked out for her. Me, I have so many problems. You know, I'm just got all this going against me. She couldn't even relate. That's why it happened for her. But when you're seeking to inspire, it's about being transparent and telling people the real story. The times that you fell flat on your face, the times that you still struggling with things that are happening behind the scenes, right? We can show up and be, you know, Michael Jordan on the basketball court, but that doesn't mean we got it together when you get out of the game, right? I mean, you could go and be in his car five minutes after the game and see a totally different person, right? So it's not about putting on the facade of having it all together. It's about showing people how to overcome the obstacles and things that are common to everybody and showing up for whatever it is that you are called to do. Because we all are gonna have our days. We're all gonna have those negative moments. We're all gonna have those dishes in the sink, you know, if somebody comes over or that clutter that's behind that closet door because you have somebody over you throwing everything in the closet, right? So we all have those moments, but it's about being authentic and true about these things so that we can motivate other people to say, if they can do it with what they experience, I don't have an excuse, I can move forward. And then the last thing is to affirm yourself. This is key because, you know, you can't wait on other people to do it for you. You have to be the love, the light, whatever it is that you're aspiring to teach and inspire, you have to be that first for yourself. And there's going to be days that it's not going to be easy, but you have to decide that you're going to be successful. And when it comes to being successful, you have to do the work behind the scenes, such as Brother Kevin now. So he's behind the scenes. But if it wasn't for him and his work, we wouldn't be where we are on this platform today. Because everything you do does not always get the recognition that you feel it deserves. You know, but as you learn daily to put down your ego, you realize that it's about the finished product. It's about the goals that are accomplished when you work with a team of people that have the same values, the same ideals that you can move forward and to be the best version of yourself. And it's then that you could share your story in books on platforms that can help other people have a roadmap to doing the same thing in their own lives. So as you think about today, you know, what are some ways that you can use the media to move your story forward and be an inspiration for other people that hear it? Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You know, every time I every time I am um, blessed with America Supermom's presence, I always learn something. So I, I know she loves her acronyms. I love my acronyms. <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing your heart centered story and your inspiration and, and how you got to where you are. So sometimes we don't know. We don't know what a person is going through, but be, because they don't want to tell their story or they don't know how to tell their stories or they feel like nobody will listen or nobody understands their story. But we all have a story. We all have a heart centered story. And so I've had three people who have shared their story and they're all different. They're all different. We come from different walks of life, even if we live in the same house. Our stories, our heart-centered stories are going to be different. Um, before we close, uh, I'll share my story um, a little bit about me. Uh, Pay Pro B Publishing, Dr. Sunshine mentioned uh, about the goodness of the pandemic. And I know there are probably people falling out of their chairs now and saying, what's good about the pandemic? Well, there's there have been some heartaches but there have been a lot of great things about the pandemic. So um, in, in January of 2020, I knew that I would not be able to work a traditional job. And I was publishing books for people. I had to go to the Mayo Clinic. And while at the Mayo Clinic, I published books. And it was a hobby. I published my own story, Walking Limitation, back in 2016. And I didn't market it. I didn't share it. I just wrote the book just because I was mentoring young people. And I did it to say, hey, if I can do this, so can you. If I can overcome my walking limitations, so can you. If I can outrun my obstacles, so can you. So that's why I wrote the book. But then I started seeing with the pandemic came hurt, heartache, 
and a need for people to tell their stories. So along came Pay Pro V Publishing. Pay Pro V means pain, progress, victory, because without pain, there is no progress. Without progress, there is no victory. And from the stories that we've all shared today, we know that there's been pain. I know Dr. Sunshine and going through, getting to where you are, even in the even in the pageant, uh, I'm sure that there were probably people saying, oh, you're, you're a large woman. What are you doing going into a pageant? Because society says it's only for those who are slim and trim. It doesn't mean, it, it isn't for people who look like you or I, because we have too much to show, but that's where the beauty comes in at. Okay, <laughs> so you there was pain in that, but then the progress, and then you got your crowns back there to say the victory. And America's Supermom Lachelle, 15 kids, wow, and you didn't get them from nowhere, they came from you, you birthed those babies. So they're telling me there is not pain in, in, in childbirth, we know that. And then the pain of depression, that's a whole, that's worse than childbirth. And having to, and so sometimes as women, as, as individuals, we feel like we have to carry the weight of the world on our shoulders. And it's, it's, it's seen as a negative that we can't do something. Well, when you, when you start to really know who you are and get to the heart of your story, then we learn better. So we do better. And then of course there's Calvin Mann with, you know, you know that there has to be pain to know that children, boys, babies, from the age of five to 11 are committing suicide that that there's no that, i mean they they don't feel like nobody can help them so that's you know that that's a painful heart-centered story so i want to thank you all for coming and let me share my screen with you once more so i want to show you that here you go If you need, if you are interested in sharing your story, if you have a story and you do have a story, but you don't know how to share your story, you don't know how to begin the process, then you can reach out to me at um, PayPro V Publishing, and that's at PayPro V P R P R P R. I'm sorry, P A. Okay, you spell my own company name. What kind of crazy is that? Okay, jazz hands, jazz hands. <laughs> Um, so it's Laquita Parks. I'm Laquita Parks and that's Paypro V P A P R O V I publishing.com. You can reach out to me. You can even email me at Laquita at a failure to communicate.com or you can call me. Um, you see my number on the screen. I won't shout it out. Um, but I want to thank you because you are you. There's uniqueness in every story. There is a center of every story and there's a heart center to every story. So before we close, um, I wanna hear Dr. Sunshine's goodbye story. All right guys, so how I end the show is I have a good night song. Well, for before bedtime we do good night and then for the Black Children's Author Showcase I do goodbye. So we'll do the good night since it's, it's close. All right, so first I say, Let's grab our beds one more time, guys. Take a sip. Clear your throats. And feel free to sing along if you know it. If not, just relax and enjoy. G-O-O-D-N-I-G-H-T. Good night and thank you very much for being here with me. Us. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm sorry, um, Lachelle, did you say where they could reach you? I don't think we said that. If, if anyone's interested in, um, re you're muted. Um, yeah. Where, where, they can, where they can reach you, America Supermom? Oh, they can follow me on uh, Instagram, my YouTube channel, or any social media platform under America Supermom or Lachelle Atkins. Awesome. And mm -hmm. Dr. Sunshine, how can we reach you? You can reach me at uh, Dr. Sunshine Presents, plural, LLC on Instagram. Also at my email, notlob, 
Classics. That's N-O-T-L-O-B Classics, plural, the number six at gmail.com. Awesome. Kelvin, you back there in the background. You have anything to add? Oh, I'm just excited about Sister Atkins and Sister Bolton and Sister Parks. You guys are amazing. I love it. <laughs> I love it. We thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, all across the globe. If you're joining us right now, we're just excited about this heart centered with the awesome, awesome, awesome Laquita Parks, ladies and gentlemen. She is the founder and the wonderful, wonderful visionary for Pay Pro V Publishing, as you heard a little earlier. I do have a quick quote because I tell you, as you know, uh, most of you know, uh, Apostle Fred, Fred Price is in the presence of the Lord right now. But I tell you, I went back to listen to uh, some of his awesome, awesome ministry and teaching, but he was a man of faith, no doubt about it. But one thing I loved about his, his um, particular sermon that he talked about, he left us this, ladies and gentlemen. He says, walk by the word of God and not by the senses. Woo, I got to say that one again. He said, walk by the word. you got to see everything as God sees it and not the way the world sees it, but not by the senses, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go by what you feel. Don't go by God said, I'm not giving you a spirit of fear. Why are we saying we fearful? What are you fearful of? I'm trying to understand what you're fearful of. If there ain't no fear, what you fearful of, right? So we got to, like you said, Sister Atkins, we got to speak it like God sees it. And that's what I want to encourage everybody today. Speak the word over your life, over your family. Yes, your son, your daughter is going to be that doctor, that fireman, that police, whatever their heart's desire is. You got to speak it. As Brother Man was talking about, we got to speak life into the children at the home level. We have to do that. So we walk by the word and not by the senses because God has seen us the way he wanted us to be before the foundations of the world. That's what we got to get to. We got to know what God's has seen and what he sees in us and then get to that as quick as possible and we got to share that with our young people because they're so precious and they're so uh honored but they're also ordained by god to be who they're supposed to be in jesus name amen so that's powerful ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for the opportunity we are so fired up and excited i just almost ran out the studio i'm so excited today. <laughs> so let me get back here <laughs> let me get back i'm so excited so back to you, Sister Parks. Back to you. God bless you today. So thank, thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you for joining us for your heart-centered story. What's your, what's your inspiration? Um, this is a series of Pay Pro V presents. So what's your story? Uh, I want to leave you in honor of Heart Health Month and honor of Black History Month. Uh, I want to leave you with this poem uh, written by yours truly uh, about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, and it's called Love Is. Love is when you are in deep despair, that it's the other person of whom you care. Love is when your life is not so bright, yet thinking how to bring others some light. Love is when you're happy and free while saying to the other person, I want to give all of me. Love is giving, forgiving, giving in, but never giving up, but giving until empty of your cup. Love is when one seeks not to please thyself, but saying for your satisfaction, I forget all else. Love is enduring the good, bad, ugly, hurt, and pain when the ultimate goal you seek is the other person's gain. Love is a three-letter word that begins with G and ends with a D, which rhymes with, I gave all of me. So thank you guys for joining us and we will be back next month, March for our March um, series in So What's Your Story? So thank you guys so much for coming. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Sister Parks for such a powerful, powerful host today. And ladies and gentlemen, if you just joined us, this has been your Heart Centered Network, ladies and gentlemen, this is a global network. And guess what, guys? We want you to share this out on all your platforms, okay? Share this out and share this with others and get in touch with these wonderful women, ladies and gentlemen, that know what you're doing. So we're so proud of you and so excited. Ladies and gentlemen, we always like to leave you with always out love, out forgive, and out serve each other. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Y'all take care now. God bless you. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.